It's uh it's a difficult time. <laughs> say. This doesn't feel right. I'm in. I'm not in my set. I'm not in my 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 studio. I'm at a place that's not my own. Um, I'm looking after a friend's farm for them while they're camping. And yeah, so I've got limited equipment. I got my computer. I got my Yeti. Which I honestly am not sure if it's working properly. I think there might be like a constant humming noise in the background. So if there is, my bad. But uh, that's just going to be for this episode. Uh, yeah, so we, we got to start. We got to start this episode off by me addressing the fact that there's... There's some really... Let me turn the gain up a little bit. Eh, just a little bit. Just a little bit. There, that's good. There's... Okay. 2020 is obviously off to a bad start. Um, there's really been nothing that good that's happened. And right now we're seeing something... Uh, you know, terrible. Amongst the coronavirus, we have, you know, the death of George Floyd, which is just absolutely terrible. Um, I didn't want to talk about it, and I don't want to talk about it because it's not something I can address. I, I don't know what to say about it I'm not I'm not someone who can I'm not someone who should address this topic and I'm also not someone who would even know what to say about this topic generally I'm pretty good at talking about everything but this is a touchy subject and I understand that the majority of people out there are going to say everyone needs to speak up and they have been saying that but obviously I'm not for racism and uh, you know what happened is not right it uh, it's you know it shouldn't have happened. See, like I'm I'm stumbling on my words here because I gotta. I just don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. There's nothing I can say, that's gonna make this better other than the fact that it shouldn't have happened. I wish it didn't happen. And I hope there's some change that can be, that can happen. But. Other than that, I, you know, it's something that needs to be addressed. When it's something like this, you can't just... For me to just put out a regular podcast and not address it, it just wouldn't... Not only it, it wouldn't feel right, but it would just also feel, you know, just not genuine. I don't know. So I just wanted to address it at least. 
just to say that uh, obviously I notice what's going on as as much as everyone like for the past week or so all my social media that I use which is generally just Twitter and a little bit of Instagram and a lot of YouTube it's mostly just been about Black Lives Matter and I get it and I understand it and yes it needs to be done it it definitely needs to be done I'm not saying you shouldn't do it you shouldn't address the issue you shouldn't post about it on social media I'm saying you should it's fine it's a good thing we need to do it there's there definitely needs to be change but as for me addressing the situation uh, I mean there's really not a whole lot I can do or say so I just want to address the fact that I'm acknowledging it and I have donated uh, you know I just don't know what to say I don't know what to say so there's only so much certain people can do and if I had a bigger audience and an actual influence then yes I would have prepared something better but I am a nobody and you know this video is not going to get any views at least when it's uploaded it's not maybe sometime in the future it will but for, but right now there's nothing I can say that's going to make any difference so I'm just addressing the fact that it's happening and that I recognized it and that I did donate and that you know if there's people out there who are watching this and thinking how are you just making a podcast without addressing what's going on in the world I'm just making it clear that this is as far as I'm taking it. And so from here on out, we're going to get uh, get back into the regular old poop cast, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it just sucks, you know. Because you, you, you look at the year 2020, brand new decade, fresh round number... You know, we're in the 20s. We're in the roaring 20s now. And right off the fucking bat, it was just garbage. There's been nothing good that has come out of 2020 so far. Every month, it's been getting progressively worse. More shit is piling on top. And it sucks. Because throughout... You know, my life growing up, every year you would always, you know, in December you'd say, okay, the next year is going to be a good year. And generally it was a little bit better. But 2020 is just going in the drain. There's countless amounts of things that were bad. I guess there was a few good things like the, the SpaceX shuttle launch. And that's it, I guess. Um, we're going to look back at these times in the future. And we're going to be like, what the hell was going on then? And it almost seems inevitable. You know, like every once in a while, something's going to happen throughout a a few years. And it's just going to be a historical event. And... You know, in the 70s, shit like this happened. In in the 40s, shit like this happened. Every few decades, there's a few years where it's just a shitty time. And as bad as it is, you could think of it as, you know, it's kind of, it might kind of, well, I gotta be careful the way I say this. I was going to say it might be necessary to have these negative times 
just so that we can appreciate how fortunate we are and we can appreciate the good things that come out of everyday life because we get used to living such a good life then the bad things happen and we're like why can't it go back to normal right i'm not saying i'm not trying to justify what happened to george floyd or or the history of black people in general i'm just saying as a collective all the negative things that have happened throughout history can have a positive outlook on the other end So yeah, um, there is one other negative thing I think I should talk about as well. Um, so if you know me, which you don't because no one does and no one watches this shit, but I have been on YouTube since the dawn of its existence. I've seen the rise and fall of many a uh, YouTubers. Uh, I've seen YouTube go through its ups and downs. I've seen, I've, you know, I've been on YouTube almost every day since 2007, which is insane, but it's true. YouTube has been a part of my life since then. And even before that, I would, you know, just barely use YouTube. But 2007 was the was the year that I actually started making and uploading videos. And the original channel that I had got deleted. But anyway, what I'm, what I'm trying to get at here is there was this YouTuber who I was really fascinated with. My first real... My first real experience of actually making a connection with someone through YouTube. Even though you don't know them, you still feel that connection. And that person was Charles Trippy. He was my absolute favorite YouTuber. Him and Shay Carl. And I mean, they both really kind of... They were the... Um, they started the idea of daily vlogs. I remember when they came up with that idea. And it was such a new concept. But they did it. And they consecutively did it. And they didn't stop. Well, Shay Carl did. And Charles, But Charles Trippy is the one I want to talk about here. He stuck with it. And he still, to this day, is making daily vlogs every day he does not have near the audience that he once had because the algorithm really pushed that away from him but ow, he it doesn't matter because he's in a, he's in a band called we the kings now and i'm sure you know them or you might not but Yeah, so he has the world record for the most uh, consecutive daily vlogs ever. He's done over 10 years of filming and uploading every single day. Every goddamn day. And you talk to any other daily vlogger out there, they've all quit because of how hard it was to keep that up. It ruined relationships. It ruined people's lives. Because what ends up happening when you're doing daily vlogs is, you know, at first it's fun for the first, you know, however many months or even year or years. And then after a while, you just, you start to live every day as, as if you're just trying to make content. So you're not actually making connections with people. You're just trying to, uh, you're trying to make every situation entertaining, so you have something interesting for your audience to watch. So then nothing in your life becomes genuine, 
because you're just hyping everything up to, to you know make it entertaining for the people who are watching and it just and then, you know nothing's genuine anymore and you can't you don't you lose relationships and it you know it goes on and on and charles has struggled with it quite a bit we saw charles go through three different girlfriends all of them named Allie. We saw him, you know, get his second Allie. We saw him propose to her on his daily vlogs. We saw him get married to her. We saw him struggle through his relationship to the point where he divorced her. We saw him get a tumor. We saw him, you know, get his, get, the other alley in his life we saw him have a child and throughout all that even before he even started the daily vlogs he had these dogs Marley and Zoe and so they were just a part of the CTFXC which is Charles's community they were just as part of the community as Charles himself. And what I'm leading to here is the fact that uh, his one dog, Marley, actually just passed away recently. And I haven't watched Charles Trippy's vlogs and I don't even know how long now. I'm definitely still subscribed to him. Um, but when I heard that, it was just like... It was just... It just... It hurt a lot. Because... You know, I felt quite a connection to those dogs. Even though I never met them. I never met Charles. You still feel like you know these people because you're in their lives every single day. People feel connections to people who are just on TV and you're just seeing them acting. But the concept of a daily vlog, I got to experience it from the inception of the idea of the daily vlog. That didn't even, that wasn't even a thing before YouTube existed. People blogged, but nobody filmed themselves in their lives every day. And I ugh. It's just there's so much chaos and shitty shit going on in this world right now and then to find out that marley died as well it was just like man like what the fuck is next you know there's earthquakes there's coronavirus there's cops literally murdering and hitting innocent people with bats and spraying them in the face constantly every single day It's just like, and really none of this shit is directly affecting me. If I didn't have access to the internet or any news at all, I wouldn't even know that any of this stuff is going on. But the fact that I you know, use the internet on a daily basis and social media on a daily basis. It surrounds me and everyone and it makes people worry. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if this world, or at least North America, you know, turns into something we don't want it to turn into within a few years. 
It seems like it's heading in a bad direction. And it's already happened in Venezuela. So, you know, we might be next. Yeah. Um, this is Marley here. This is the dog. Charles has like a full... Uh, I don't even like looking at this. Because it's going to make me really upset. Um... Ugh. Oh my god, I can't even look at this. <laughs> it's... It just sucks, you know? Because you don't think about... You don't ever think about this stuff when you're a kid. I started watching Charles when I was a kid. And, you know, it was just him and his dogs... Marley and Zoe and Ellie. And then over the years, you just, as you grow up, because as a kid, you just see things as they are within that little window of time that you've been alive. You're not alive long enough to actually understand how shitty the world can turn out. And so as a kid, you just see them and you're like, oh, they have the perfect life. And then they get divorced. And then, you know, Charles gets a tumor and constant seizures. And then the tumor goes away and he gets cancer. And it's like, what the hell? You don't expect those things to happen, but they do happen to everybody. But this, the world we're living in right now, is beyond that. It's so bad. And there's, I don't even, like, what can we do? What exactly is going to happen? We're where we might be really fucked. We might potentially be really fucked. So this episode's really depressing so far. Look, it's... <laughs> I wasn't really prepared to film this episode. It's, it's, it's weird filming in a different place. Um, it's easier in the comfort of your own home or in your own studio. I like just having access to all the, the way I had things set up. Because here I don't have access to anything. You know? I can't even use my soundboard. But that's fine. I got, I do have video clips prepared. And we'll get to them in a bit. I just want to see what time we're at here. Okay. Yeah. So I mentioned Venezuela. So I'll just say, speaking of Venezuela, there is going to be an episode of the podcast coming up soon. And it's going to feature someone. It's going to be the first real official guest of the podcast. And I'm super excited for it. Um, it's one of the, you know, that's a good thing to think about. I know I've had a, a guest, two guests in the same episode on episode four, which, you know, they were just friends of mine. But other than that, I haven't had a guest and I've wanted guests. Because you do so many of these podcasts alone, you run out of shit to say. And so the guest I have coming on 
is going <laughs> like i can't even believe it happened it's not it's not someone that's like extremely famous or anything but when you find i'm not going to spoil it and i don't want to say who it is just in case if it doesn't go through but i know it will go through but when you find out who this guest is you're going to be no one watches this shit <laughs> but for me it's just crazy that this person's coming on because I discovered this person through another podcast and it's just it's just weird how it all came together and now this person's going to be a guest so it's it's really exciting and if that person is watching this right now hi <laughs> you know who you are but don't comment do not comment on this video person who you know who you are who is watching this right now because you'll give it away even though no one watches this shit anyway that don't whatever man but this is a step in the direction of me actually gaining an audience by getting this person on that's the first step and then who knows who i'm gonna have next on you know it's crazy. I love it. I love that the podcast is finally starting to make some ground. Because I had a vision in my head when I first started this. And I was so pumped. I was so amped. I was so motivated to do it. And I made a lot of episodes. And then I went off. And I left for about a year. And then I came back. And now... I am 100% committed to this podcast, and I have been for a long time. And we're 157 episodes in. We're getting close to 200. Okay? But, uh, yeah. So at this point, there's, there's no reason to stop now, no matter what. The only way I'm going to stop doing this podcast is if I'm absolutely forced to by something or someone. But other than that, I can't stop doing this podcast. Because if I stop, I will regret it for the rest of my life. And I truly know that if I keep this going, I can absolutely turn this into something big uh, big i can turn this into something that i want it to be it's just i know it i can see it and with my understanding of how success has worked through uh as Rhett and link like to say entertainment so yeah. Uh, so now that we got all the depressing shit out of the way, why don't we jump into some tick ticks, some talks, some tickities? Why don't we do that, bro? <clears throat> so I mentioned at the top of the episode. Uh, whoa, what's that? Whoa, what's that? Oh, that's cool. I saw something that caught my eye. This is in my house. Anyway, at the top of the episode, I mentioned I'm at a friend's place watching their farm. So I actually have, I recorded a bunch of footage of exactly what I'm doing while I'm here. There's goats and pigs and chickens and dog and a llama. Um, what else? There's cats, but... I don't think I got any footage of those because... Oh, yeah, I did, actually. I did get footage of cats. They're very skittish. They don't like people. They're feral. But they, you know, they hang around and eat here. Anyway, um, keep the mice away. Yeah, I recorded a whole compilation. I'm going to make a nice little episode of what it is that I'm doing here, how I'm taking care of all the animals. And it's going to be great. I just have to edit that and upload that sometime. 
but I probably won't start editing that until I'm actually, until I leave this place because by the time I get off work and drive out here, because it's out on an acreage, that's not the right word. Maybe it is. I don't know. It takes 20 minutes to get out here, and then, you know, I gotta do all the farm chores, which takes about two hours, maybe a little bit more, depending on what's happening. And then I gotta come in, and I gotta make supper, and I gotta eat it, and then by then, I'm just tired as hell, and it's like 8 o'clock. So I don't really feel like editing. But, uh, yeah. We, we will, we will rock you. Um, yeah. So I'm going to upload an episode, vlog style, Charles Trippy vlog style of what it is that goes on here. And so since we're on the topic of farming, why don't we show a video of an egg? of what you can do with an egg. If you have a friend who's sleeping in your house and they have their mouth open, get yourself an egg yolk <laughs> and do this. Oh, does it have music? It does. This video might get claimed. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the music. <laughs> but why don't, why don't we watch that again? Because I talked a lot through it. For those listening, there's this guy sleeping on a bed with his mouth open. And it sounds like a girl is holding the camera and a spoon with the yolk on it. She puts the, <laughs> she puts the yolk in his mouth and he wakes up in like a complete panic and coughs it up. You know, you know that feeling when you're sleeping and something suddenly wakes you up and it's just like, ah, ah, you know, for absolute panic. <laughs> it's just like such an overreaction. But at least he got it out of his mouth. He got it out of his mouth, baby. Yeah, this episode's a little shitty. And I apologize. But. It's gonna, it, you know. It's never gonna be the same when I'm out in my own studio, bro. Except for that one episode I did. When I covered Lee Newton leaving the Valley Folk. I was working away from home, and I filmed that episode in a hotel, actually in the camp room, and that episode got more views than any of my fucking episodes of the podcast. It didn't get a lot, like it only got like 5,000 or something, but that, for me, that's way beyond, you know, anything I ever got on the episode, and the audio wasn't recording right. And my hair was a mess, and I had a shitty mustache. Like, it, the lighting was off. It was all garbage. But I still did it. And it worked out in the end. Anyway. You ever, like, when you're packing for vacation, or even just going to someone's house for a week, or going anywhere, on a camping trip, on a hike, for a few days... Do you ever find? <laughs> Do you ever find yourself overpacking? Like you start overthinking, and you're like, "Well, I should pack. I'm gonna be gone for five days, but maybe I'll just pack six pairs of underwear, just in case something happens. Maybe, maybe you know, I might need an extra pair." And then you're like, "Well, what if?" What if I use that extra pair and then I need another extra pair so you pack more underwear? And you start to you start to overthink everything. And then you go on the vacation and you're just like, I got too many clothes. And you, you end up finding yourself not even wearing half the shit that you brought. 
Well, here is a great comparison, analogy to what I just said. Vacation time. Let's see what I need to pack. Two shirts, going to be a two-day vacation, so that makes sense. Two pairs of shorts, going to be warm, so that will do. Two pairs of socks, got to keep that Nike logo on me at all times. And of course, two pairs of underwear. But what if I shit myself? Wait, I never shit myself on vacations. Or do I? I feel like an idiot if I poop my pants with no backup pair of underwear. Maybe I should just pack one extra pair of underwear? Okay, just to be safe. Unless I shit myself twice, <laughs> getting a backup, backup pair of underwear. Yeah. I only poop this much? Okay, I'm just gonna pack two extra pairs. That should be enough. Unless, of course, I shit myself for a third time, needing a backup, backup, backup pair. Okay, who am I kidding? I'm gonna shit myself so much on this vacation, <laughs> I need to pack the entire drawer. Yeah, definitely the right decision. Hell yeah, bro. Very good, Brennan. Very good. You get my vote, bro. You get my vote, bro. Bro, you get my vote. Hmm. What is the when you sing about me? There's lots, there's a lot, there's a lot of chickens on this farm. There's a lot of chickens and there's a lot of chicks, which are going to turn into a lot of chickens and roosters. They're tiny right now and they're yellow, but they're going to grow up big and white. <laughs> Maybe even black, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, do you ever have a bird fly into your window? That, it's been happening a lot more to me lately. Not at this place, but at my actual house. Birds have been flying into the window. And at first when it happened, I was like... The first time it happened, I thought someone threw like a rock at my window or something. So I immediately like opened up the curtain. I looked out, didn't see anything. So I opened up the door and I stuck my head out and I'm like, Hey, motherfucker, who threw a rock? And there wasn't anybody. So I'm like, okay, this is kind of freaking me out. It didn't even occur to me that, like, a bird flew into the window. But that's a thing that happens. You got clean windows? That bird is like, I think I can go in there. That looks like a place that I could make a nest. And they fly in, and they hit their beaks or their head, and they fall into the ground. And so it didn't just happen to my house once. It happened, like, several times over over the course of, like, three days. <sighs> so the second time it happened, I could actually... I was sitting in the living room while it happened. So I saw the shadow of the bird hit the window, and I'm like, oh, that's what it was. And I think the first time it happened, I was pretty baked, too, so... You know, when you're baked and shit like that happens, you, you completely escalate the situation and, and, and think it's, like, something way worse than it is. So, yeah. The second time it happened, I'm like, oh, it's a bird, and then it happened again. I'm like, oh, God. Why are these birds flying in my window? I should put up a sign that says, this is a window. But it would have to be, yeah, never mind. I was going to make a stupid joke, but I decided not to. I'm really tired. I'm tired. Anyway. So when birds actually hit the window, they can get pretty stunned. You know? They can even get knocked out or even die. So why don't we take a look at this. And you tell me what you think of this video. Right, little one. Because she just flew into the window. I think it's just a young thing like that. Okay, come on. Look, there's the door. 
funny at the same time it's funny for you listening assholes this girl <laughs> god damn i'm tired this girl said uh this bird flew into her window and she was she's holding it you know she's holding the whole body so the wings are you know, not flapping or anything. The bird looks pretty coherent. It's moving its head around. It's kind of wagging its tail feathers and moving its legs. And she's like, okay, I'm going to set this bird free. And she throws it. And the bird doesn't move at all in the air. It goes up and then arcs back down and falls into the gravel. As if it was just a dead bird. And the video stops there. So I'm thinking if that didn't kill the bird, it would have probably just got up and, and eventually flew away. It was probably just pretty stunned. So if a bird flies into your window and it's kind of loopy and it's laying on the ground, you can pick it up, but don't throw it because it's not, <laughs> it might not fly. <laughs> you got to wait until he's ready to go. Just leave him. How about just leave him? Okay? He'll figure it out. Or take him in and, and uh, you know, nurse him up a bit. Fix him up if he's hurt. But don't throw him. Because the bird might not fly. <laughs> it's funny. It's so funny. But it's mean. But it's funny. Oh, fucking yeah. Oh, yeah, I am again. Ah. I gotta get that mummy sound. <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of dynamic banter lately. If you haven't checked out uh, dynamic banter, definitely check them out. Because uh, Steve Zaragoza and Mike Falzone, those are some funny guys. My kind of humor. Uh, but anyway, back to the birds. Nature. What do you like about nature? I've been experiencing a lot of nature over the past few days. Being out here on the farm. Um, not a lot of flowers, though. But this guy. This guy not only was experiencing the flowers in a botanical garden, but he also has a great Gilbert Godfrey impression. I don't understand why we go to the botanical garden to see plants. We can just go to the park and look at them there. This is fucking ridiculous. I pay good money to go to the botanical garden. There's people. They know what's up. <laughs> so good. See? They did know what's up. They were like, so good. <laughs> that was very good. I want to watch that again. This guy's got a great impression. I don't understand why we go to the botanical garden to see plants. We can just go to the park and look at them there. This is fucking ridiculous. I pay good money. To go to the botanical store. There's people. <laughs> they know what's up. <laughs> I love that. I love that the other people were like, it's so good. So good. It was so good. Very, very good. He seems like a cool guy to hang out with. <laughs> You ever been to a botanical garden? It's really nice. I don't know why they call it botanical. Actually, no, I do know why. Botany, flowers, 
it's just a weird word. Botanical. Botanical. It sounds like botanical. I can't even... Uh, it sounds like something. I'm not a comedian. I can't come up with stuff on the spot like that. I wish I could. Maybe with a little more practice I can. This room is really echoey. So echoey in here. Echo! Where's Oliver? Oliver! Oliver! I hear him. There he is. Oliver's here. You wanna come up? No, he ran away. Fine then. <laughs> he's, it's the first time he's done that before. So tr traditionally, farmers, you know, are kind of out of touch and usually old. But the person who owns this place is around my age. So they're not out of touch. But generally they are. Generally, they're old, out-of-touch boomers. And they don't know what's going on in the world. But sometimes, they just want to be in touch. They want to be with it. They want to be hip with it. If you know what I mean. They want to be a part of the younger generation. They want to fit in. So... <laughs> I got a couple vids of boomers trying to fit in on TikTok. They're doing what they think you're supposed to do on TikTok. They have no idea what they're doing or how to do it, but they're trying. And that's what makes it funny. The cringe factor of this is so genuine that it makes it funny. So let's watch the first one. Man, this one's insane, dude. It's insane. They don't get it. They just don't get it. Uh, well. Me and my lasagna, homemade lasagna. <laughs> We're heading tonight for supper. <laughs> <laughs> so what do I do? <laughs> I can just imagine the wife is like, okay, so let's let's try this TikTok thing out. <laughs> I'm going to start filming you, and you're going to tell the people that you made lasagna. <laughs> I just love how he sits there and stares at the camera for about five seconds. There's so many good parts of this. He stares at the camera for five seconds. It's as if he doesn't want to do it. Or maybe their grandchild was like trying to convince them to do it. There's so many scenarios you could play out here. And then at the end, the grandma's like, okay, and so how do I do it? How do I shut it off? You know? It's just so typical of a goddamn boomer. <laughs> They don't understand technology, and it's great. We need to watch this again. Uh, well. Me and my lasagna, homemade lasagna. That's what we're having tonight for supper. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so what do I do? Just, just. So what do I do? Just. Oh, man. What a great TikTok. Me and my lasagna, homemade lasagna. That's what we're having for supper. Bye. And look how he's holding the fucking lasagna, too. Like, it's in one of those cheap metal pans, and he's just kind of, like, loosely grabbing it. It's all bent. One wrong move, and that lasagna's going on the floor. Well... Me and my lasagna, homemade lasagna. That's what we're having tonight for supper. Bye. I love how he says it too. 
Me and my, me and my lasagna. Homemade lasagna. <laughs> it's like he's getting mad. Oh, what, what great people. Anyway, in this other clip we have here, um, the guy just, he has a really weird way with words. Just, <laughs> and then there's a grandma too. It's, it's a good one. You'll like this one. So I was mowing and then I almost ran over this duck. Look it. There's a duck right there. It's what? A duck. Oh, come away from there. Oh. You see a duck and then there's another you make toad. A picture of it? Oh, what is that? Another It's another toad. Okay, come away from Why there. Why is there a duck? <laughs> oh, don't bother it's on its nest, isn't it? I think so. Oh, who are you calling? No one. I'm just taking a movie. <laughs> Please don't bother the duckling. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that term, dude. <laughs> Look. No one under the age of maybe 45 would use those words in that way. I'm just taking a movie. Nobody says that. <laughs> okay? People said that you know, from the start of the, from the invention of the home movie fucking videotape camera to about somewhere in the early mid 2000s, you know, I'm taking a movie, I'm filming a movie, but to say I'm taking a movie, dude, in 2020, you don't say that. You don't say that. And the fact that he's sitting there and he's like, why is there a duck? Why is there a duck here? You know? Why would you ask that question? There's a duck there. No one's going to have an answer to that question. The duck is there because the duck chose to lay its eggs there probably. Or that's where the duck lives. Who knows? He's so concerned about the duck. They both, both of them make a big deal out of it. It's just... So Boomer I was City. mowing and then I almost ran over this duck. Yeah, you did. Look it. There's a duck right there. There's a it's duck what? right there. A duck. A duck. Oh, oh my God, it's a duck. Come away from there. Oh. You see a duck and then there's did another you make toad. A of it? There's another oh, toad. It's another toad. It's okay, a toad. Why is there a duck? Why is there a duck? Oh, I'm trying to mow my lawn. Why is there a duck? Father, it's on its nest, isn't it? I think so. Oh, who are you calling? No one. I'm just taking... Who are you calling? Grandma see a phone. Grandma see you holding the phone. They're like, who, who are you calling? Don't worry, Grandma. I'm just... What does he say? A movie. Oh calling no one i'm just taking a movie i'm just taking a movie grandma but grandma gets it because her generation grew up saying stupid shit like that forget the duck dude <laughs> forget the duck okay I thought that was a pimple on my leg, but it's just my hair's getting pulled. Huh, huh, huh. During when I was in high school, I listened to a lot of music. It was on like on the daily basis. I was trying to find new music. It was fun, and I loved it, and I still love music. But I find myself nowadays not looking for music anymore. It's been a few years now. I just kind of stopped utilizing Spotify to its full potential. And I need to get back into it. My focus has just been so 
geared towards this podcast. I, you know, and listening to other podcasts. All I do is listen to podcasts. Once I started listening to podcasts somewhere around 2016, I stopped listening to music. I'll occasionally find new songs, but for the most part, I'm just listening to podcasts. And so, when I hear a new um, song, <laughs> when I hear a new good song, it really, I love it. It just makes me feel good. Because what I used to do is, like, if I was driving or if I was walking somewhere, music was always the first option. But nowadays, it's just podcasts. And I really need to do a mix of both, because I need to find some new music. Because music is amazing. I love music. But I haven't been doing it a lot. Anyway. This is a fella who... They call it a Jew harp, but I've always called it a mouth harp. Same idea. This guy is insane on this thing, okay? Do you know what a mouth harp is? The thing you put in your mouth and it goes boing, 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 boing. I used to have one. I don't know where it went. But uh, you need. let's just listen to this guy. There's a guy playing the mouth harp, or Jew harp, and then the two other guys are beatboxing with him. And even the guy playing the mouth harp is doing a little beatboxing while he's mouth harping. It's really excellent. Problem. I don't know what they're saying. I don't know what they're saying. But I could listen to that all day. And night. That was so good. That was so good. We gotta listen to it again. Problem. So good. I need more of that. <laughs> oh, it's great. And I'm just going to end this episode with one final bonus clip. And then I'm going to give a recommendation. Okay? So here we go. Can't eat there anymore. They banned me. <laughs> <laughs> and this is another place we're not allowed in. <laughs> yo, 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 don't leave, bro. <laughs> Man, it's cold in London, but this jacket keeps you warm, huh? <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a farm boy. <laughs> Man, I bet working at a bank is tedious. <laughs> I can deal with a dog in my house, but I can't bear a cat. <laughs> Man, I love this place so much. I ban tan tans. <laughs> yeah, what the hell are you doing? You can't park here. <laughs> Man, I can't believe these pun videos have gone viral. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to go home and draw a McKellarin book. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we gotta go out there and give it 110%. <laughs> oh, man. 
I don't know where to park. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, honestly, you're hilarious. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yo, Dan, tell me your favorite. Very good, right? Very excellent. Very, very excellent. Very, very good for you. Good, 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 good. Bump, 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 this guy is part of the, uh, what group would you call it? Like the, the Churdley's, um, Ryan the Leader fucking group, you know, all those guys, Trevor, Wallace, Gus, uh, I don't know if you can include Gus Johnson in there, but he, I, he's a little involved with them too. Yup. But this guy's channel is Sir Spence. Uh, his name's Spencer. He just took the Sir and put it in front of Spence. And he's only got 16.9k subscribers. Which is insane. Insanely low. Compared to the other guys in his group. And I personally think he is one of, if not the most funniest out of all the groups. It's hard to say, because they're all super funny. But, you know, if you haven't checked him out, I highly recommend checking him out. Um, I'm sure, like, if you're watching Ryan the Leader, or Churd Lees, or Trevor Wallace, you've probably seen this guy show up there. He's great. He's very, very talented and very funny. And he's only got 16.9K, which is a lot compared to me. <laughs> but in the YouTube space, that is nothing. It's something. It shows that he's heading in the right direction, but he's not there yet. This is the new generation of YouTubers that are rising up. And it's really, it's, it's really interesting watching each new generation come about. I'll always be connected to the first generation. And it really took a long time to accept that that first generation died off. Not all of them. Like, Philip DeFranco was a part of the first generation. Uh, not a lot of other people. I can't even think of who else was. But, you know, like, I'm talking Shay Carl, Lisa Nova, uh, what the fuck's his name? Naltz. Uh, uh, you know, Charles Trippy. Uh, s &P Films. Well, I just seen was kind of a part of the first generation. You know, there's so many, but Cass and G. They're all gone. They all... They're all gone. And it sucks. Although Cass and G is kind of back. On pajama pants. And I hope that blows up as well. I honestly wish Kasim would have kept his own fucking podcast slash series, like, skit series going. Because that was really good, and that had so much potential. But he just stopped it. Anyway, go check out Sir Spence. That's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like comment subscribe hit that bell notification and i'll see you in the next one bye bye everyone bye